Hi friends, I am Angie with the Michael and Angie Foundation and baby Eric is eating toast in the kitchen right now. I am making this video to tell you my update on carnivore. Trying carnivore for about four months now. I definitely had some cheat days or days of like carbicide where I just ate a whole bunch of crackers or ate some pizza and I noticed on those days I did experience bloating with the high processed foods and the wheat and things like that um but I'm gonna go over pros and cons in general to the carnivore diet and let you know where I'm at now that I've done it for a third of a year now um, pros I would say I have not experienced anything else that gave me the weight loss that this did it's amazing how fast for me that weight came off and my belly got flat um, on the carnivore diet so I think that is incredible and unmatched there's Eric say hi hi Eric's not a carnivore, I'm not he, carnivore. he likes carbs no you do I you, don't. you like bread yeah you, you like cereal yeah eat you like crackers yeah fruit yeah, yeah. he's I got bored. he likes carbs yeah so, so yeah, I think, I think initially my energy went up, so weight loss was good, um, being able to put on muscle, also the satiety effect of meat. I didn't have to think about food as much, I didn't have to prepare as many different things in order to get full. I feel like veganism, the extreme opposite of carnivore, would be very hard to pull off because you would have to buy much more food to get as many calories as you can get from meat and Daddy, you'd have to eat more often mom, just eat a lot house. a lot a lot <laughs> um, what other pros my hair grew really fast my nails grew really fast um, my skin seemed very clear and I think that's it for the pros I liked that it had a full <laughs> amino acid profile, like all the meats have really good, really great, excellent amino acids and B vitamins. Um, now the cons. I didn't find it ideal for me. I found after a while that I got very tired. And I don't know what that was, if maybe too much iron in my liver. <laughs> Uh, not enough of some <laughs> other uh, electrolytes or what um, yeah the fatigue was starting to get to me to where I think one day I had three cups of coffee and I wasn't sleeping as well at night and so at first I was sleeping great and then suddenly I was tired during the day and um, it occurred to me that if you need to supplement with certain electrolytes, magnesium and potassium particularly, then it's not a complete diet. Um, so, for that reason, I'm starting to back away from carnivore. Jeez. Jeez. But I do plan to still keep meat and red meat in my diet. Especially, um, yeah, for the benefits that I've seen, I think that it's worth keeping around. Um, the other con is it's uh, so expensive. Um, we have like a local butcher and their meat is so fantastic. Like it's so, so good, but it's so expensive. Like meat already in any grocery store is going to be more expensive than your produce. And you know, it's, it's more nutrient dense. It's more calorically dense. And so it makes sense that it's, it's more expensive. But, yeah, if you want, like, the really good quality meat, it's going to be even more expensive. And I think it makes a difference. For me, I noticed when I switched to our local butcher, um, not only did it taste a thousand times better, like, no comparison, it made me feel better. I felt like it even made me look better. The next day, I was like, who's that? So, um, 
I have been following several carnivores and doctors who are carnivores on YouTube and I've noticed that they're looking a little bit worse for wear than they did a few years ago. Just kind of keeping an eye on them. Okay, I'll tell you this. In general, I think vegans, a lot of them look kind of sick. And I have seen a lot of health problems in vegans over time, especially if they're having to supplement and they're missing out on, you know, what we talked about, the B vitamins, the vitamin D, all, all those things, bye all bye. the amino acids. Bye bye. Um, but on the other end of the bye spectrum, bye. I've seen these carnivores starting to look bye kind bye. of pale, kind of gray, kind bye of sick. Bye. Bye, bye bye. Bye bye. And so I just, I really believe that. Bye if, bye. So I generally think that if someone looks healthy and they're giving health and dietary advice, then they probably know more what they're talking about. Like there are some doctors out there that they just look gross. They just look sick. And it's hard for me to really uh, follow their advice when they don't look healthy themselves. So yeah, I've been watching these people. And um, I also came across a one YouTuber who was carnivore for seven or eight years. And I haven't watched all of his, all of his videos because he has a lot, but um, I'll link his channel in the description. He was carnivore for seven or eight years and then he got close to liver failure. And now he's trying to recover from that and he's eating, you know, a lot of variety in his meals, but they're very specific and they're very, like he was eating raw meat and eating things like um, brain and raw liver and just a lot of extreme things, extreme in my opinion. And anyways, trying to optimize his diet and his health, um, but it was all meat. And then he got very sick and explained why, and now he's trying to recover from that. So, I mean, that really scared me, honestly, and I don't want to get to that point for sure, because I'm at the point of fatigue, and yeah, I'd rather save myself, like, serious health issues, because I've never had health issues. Like, I've never had serious health issues. So, yeah, I'm not going to keep going down this road if it's going to lead me to a bad place. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reintroduce some other foods that I haven't eaten for a while. I have a potato baking in the oven and I cooked up some mushrooms and I have some ground beef. So this guy, um, his name is Frank, Frank mm. Tifano. Anyways, um, Mark. he still definitely eats meat and advocates for eating meat, but not exclusively. And so, yeah, I, yeah, so I'm going to show you what I have going for lunch and I think it's more well-rounded. I think it's more balanced. I think it has a, a greater balance of nutrients. Um, when we're looking at the Krebs cycle, you know, there's carbohydrates and there's fats that are utilized. It's not just one or the other. And I feel like that's the problem with both extremes of carnivore and veganism is they do you know, vegans do like all carbs, low fat, no animal protein, and then carnivores do the opposite of that. And I think that you do need both or optimally you could use both. And also the other thing is, um, you know, we got to look at what our ancestors ate. So I'm mostly German, English, and Japanese. And so looking at what my ancestors ate will, should inform my diet because that's what my body has evolved to handle and to process over the generations. It's kind of like different breeds of dogs. You know, you wouldn't feed one breed necessarily the same thing as a different breed. Um, they might have some specific differences. Um, the other thing is the gut microbiome. I never had a carnivore advocate really explain the gut microbiome to me. They just kind of ignore it. Let's go to grass. So yeah, I've never had a carnivore advocate explain the, the microbiome very adequately to my satisfaction of like, okay, if you stop eating carbs fruits and vegetables all together, does that kill off the gut microbiome? You know what? <laughs> it just kind of didn't make sense to me. Like we don't, if we don't give our gut bacteria any fiber at all, 
uh, what happens to it. And I was noticing constipation and it was a little unsettling for me because I'd never had that in my life before. And yeah, I was, I was starting to crave coconuts and I think it was for the fiber, but um, with that I had like two coconuts in two days and then I had some interesting stool that had like oil in it. And then I got kind of concerned that things were a little bit out of whack and out of balance for me. So yeah, I started looking into it more. Um, the last thing that really made me feel like maybe carnivore wasn't optimal for me is just generally like our dentition, our teeth are not the teeth of carnivore. Other carnivore animals have like very sharp saber, you know, pointy teeth and I don't have any pointy teeth. <laughs> I have some sharp teeth, but I also have teeth that look more like they're made for herbivores. So since I have a mix of sharp and flat teeth, I would say that, yeah, I'm an omnivore and it would make sense to eat a variety. And anyways, I'm gonna give that a try. I wouldn't say that my health is bad, I would just say that overall I was lacking in energy as time went by. And uh, I was also losing a lot of like imagination and creativity and that kind of drive which I enjoyed before. So I would say overall, um, sorry let's go back to another pro that I just thought of, um, anxiety. I would say overall. Uh, carnivore was great for anxiety like amazing like it just killed anxiety it just made it a non-issue so uh, if you're dealing with anxiety I would just suggest to incorporate more meat more red meat and see how you feel um, since I'm not one of those people that had like severe um, digestive issues or autoimmune issues or anything I had no health issues I wouldn't be a good candidate for carnivore um, even short term uh, to heal anything. There wasn't anything that needed healing so I was already starting at a good place. Um, if I was starting at a good place and just maybe needed a little bit of weight loss um, and then ended up with fatigue, I would say to keep the meat in but incorporate other things as well to give me more energy, starches and carbohydrates. Um, add in a little more fiber to keep me regular, um, keep the bowel movements regular and comfortable. And yeah, I'm gonna keep you guys updated on that. And yeah, I think I'm just coming full circle back to where I started, but with a little bit more meat as I can afford it and better quality meat too. Oh my gosh, it makes such a difference in taste and experience. I literally had a flat iron steak from our local butcher and it was the best steak I ever had in my life. I cooked it on a cast iron skillet. I had dry aged it for a day and then let it sit and temper for two hours before cooking it and then just I cooked it in butter like a few tablespoons of butter at the end of it. I was flipping it every minute. Divine. I can't even explain to you how I felt as I was eating it. It was like I take a bite and I was like transported. To, I don't know if this was just my wacky imagination, but I was like transported to like the field where the cow roamed and ate the grass and Don't eat the grass. Don't eat it. Don't eat the grass. It was like it was just so wholesome. This make you be me and your tummy. It was just so wholesome and so beautiful that I don't know it inspired almost like a vision of that cow almost like a sacred spiritual experience and it was delicious and it melted in my mouth and there was no comparison to meat that I could find in a regular grocery store so I would say for me what what will be the most sustainable will be to incorporate um, much more affordable vegetables and fruits, um, but keep the meat and just have it as like a portion of my meal. So hopefully that helped. Um, I am 
a little humbled to say I was wrong. I was so enthusiastic and I was so excited. And I think that's part of the allure of carnivore or any extreme diet is you feel like, oh, I've stumbled upon a secret. Like, yes, this is going to be my ticket. This is going to be the thing that's going to make me Superman or Superwoman. And this like elitism of like, I know something that most people don't. And it's got to be true because most people don't do it. And everyone's saying it's wrong. So it must be right because they're trying to suppress it and all this stuff. And Let's yeah. Go glass. Let's go glass. No. <laughs> Let's go glass. Okay. Thanks for watching. All right. So this is my lunch. It's a baked potato with cheese, grated cheddar cheese, some of that local um, butcher's ground beef, and some sautéed mushrooms, and chopped up green onion. This is only half of a baked potato, so I think I'll have the other half for dinner. It looks very filling and delicious. Ooh, I just finished that off. It was so tasty. And now typically potatoes do give me gas. So, so I'm expecting that I'll probably get that um, maybe quite a bit today and bloating um, since I haven't had a potato in months. I will update you guys in an hour or two and let you know how it goes. Okay, it's been a few minutes. I did notice a small headache starting right here. And with, that is very unusual because I never, never, never get headaches. It's very rare for me to get a headache. And when I do, they're mild. And this is mild. So I don't know if it's related to the food at all. When I started eating, like the first couple bites, it was weird. It was almost surreal. Like my mind was kind of doing a whoa thing. And maybe it was like my mouth sensing carbs for the first time in a long time and just like sending a signal to my body like, get ready, we're getting potato. Something like that maybe. Okay, it's been a couple hours since I ate that half a baked potato and I don't have any bloating or gas yet, which is really nice. It was really atypical for when I typically, for when I, usually eat um, any kind of potato or fries or anything like that. Um, I'll show you what we're dealing with here. Pretty normal. Um, I don't know if it's maybe just going to take a while for my gut bacteria to repopulate and the potato is just going to pass right through or what's really the situation is in my gut I could not tell you. So I'll keep you posted as we go along. Okay, it's been two hours since I ate dinner, and I ate the exact same thing that I had for lunch. Uh, baked potato with cheese, ground beef, sautéed mushrooms, and what else did I put on there? Green onions? Um, and no bloating. Looks the same. Maybe a little bit of bloating, actually. Well, it doesn't look terrible anyways, and no gas. So, what does this mean? Cheese. And I had Cheese. good energy throughout the day. Cheese. I didn't need a second Cheese. cup of coffee like I Cheese. usually do. Not usually, well, I'd say 75, at least 75% of the time, yes, usually do. Um, so this might be the start of something new and wonderful to go back to a normal diet. <laughs> it's the next morning and I haven't had anything to eat yet except for some coffee. I just wanted to report the aftermath of yesterday's dietary changes. Um, I woke up in the middle of the night just briefly and like rolled over and I felt some muscle soreness. So that was something to note, which doesn't usually happen. Um, there was minimal gas, so that wasn't an issue. And, but to me still, so no bloating. That's the oven saying it's time to make some bacon. Um, so yeah, definitely still keep gonna keep meat in the diet. Um, keep keep the protein pretty high. Um, but I would say carnivore is really good as an elimination diet. Maybe short term, if you're having severe problems, it could be good to try just to see if there's a particular food or type of food that's giving you problems. And it's also really good to get a flat tummy. That's my take. So today's breakfast is just one slice of bacon, but this is extra thick bacon. And three eggs, one slice of toast, buttered toast, and this is half, this looks horrible, but it's 
half of yesterday's oatmeal <laughs> with blueberries. It's almost lunch time and today's lunch is going to be pretty much the same thing as yesterday's. Except that I decided to mash a potato this time, so a little variety here. We got a nice mashed potato. I might not eat the whole thing, but I'll just be adding the ground beef from yesterday, the sauteed mushrooms, cheese, and some green onion. It's been a couple hours since I had lunch, and let's see. We are not having bloating issues. It's looking pretty good considering that I've had a one and a half potatoes in the last two days and I had some toast for breakfast, a little bit of oatmeal, a little bit of apple, some blue, a few blueberries. So with all that fiber, I had one bowel movement this afternoon, not super substantial, but yeah, it was something I was waiting for all day. Um, so yeah, I think my energy level is good. It's not great. I don't feel like super energized, but I don't definitely don't feel crashing and exhausted. It's been two days since I have reintroduced other foods besides meat into my diet. Um, yesterday I had half a baked potato or mashed potato with the same ground beef, cheese, uh, sauteed mushrooms and green onions. And then I had some apple and I, uh, for dinner we went to a picnic, so we had um, just a regular hot hamburger, hot dog, sorry, a regular hot dog with the regular white bread bun um, and watermelon. And I'll show you guys what my tummy is doing today. It looks nice and normal. Bing. Um, so yeah, I'm signing off for this video. Thanks for watching. And looks like we are not doing carnivore, but we're keeping the meat. We're just doing pretty much a regular a regular diet no no, no special diet <laughs> nothing extraordinary nothing unusual um, just trying to keep keep things in balance not a lot of sugars not a lot of processed foods so yeah thank you